That story and as ESCOM sways back and forth, cutting off power to prevent a total collapse of the grid, companies are investing in solar energy in order to get off the grid once and for all. Businesses without alternative energy resources are forced to stop operating during load shedding. Let's speak to solar energy expert Wairo Schnabel. Thank you very much, Mr. Schnabel, for your time here uh, on ENCA. I'm sure you heard a little bit of what uh, um, the minister was talking about uh, earlier today. They also said that available in terms of IPPs at the moment and in the grid is 688 megawatts. Is that enough? Um, good afternoon and uh, good afternoon to the viewers. Um, yeah, it's, it's actually much more than that. Um, but um, these numbers that float around um, are all different. So we've got on the one end um, the um, installations through the reprogram, and um, that is around um, 6, 000, uh, um, 3 thousand megawatts, so with wind um, over 6,000. But in the private sector, and that's what you were talking about, mm. we've got over 4.5, 4.8 gigawatts of PV installation over the years. So we've done some analysis how much PV was installed in South Africa outside of the reprogram. And uh, that is a significant number. It's actually bigger than the, the reprogram. And it's about time that uh, people do that because it's a very economical cost benefit to each company mm -hmm. to put solar on their roof and just substitute the electricity u uh, usage from, um, from solar. And um, you just said something just now which I would like to warn a little bit about. People want to go off grid completely. Yeah. That doesn't make so much sense. Okay. Because if you go off grid completely, it means you have to cater for all eventualities. And, you know, there's a saying, alone you can go fast, but together you can go far. So what I mean with it is, once we're in a grid, we're together, we can share resources. So at some point, you know, you will um, make your um, coffee and boil a kettle, and uh, 10 minutes later, I will do it. So if we cater um, for everybody to ca uh, boil the, um, the, uh, the coffee at the same time, we would have to make provision for that. And that's why I say, guys, stay on the grid, share resources in the grid. And if you don't need your solar resources, and luck, um, or hopefully now municipalities get to that, give that energy back into the grid that others can use it and get a reward for that um, municipality like city of cape town i've heard johannesburg is going to do that as well now yes, so yeah. that's a great movement that people understand that this is a distributed generation method mm. everybody can contribute and by the way everybody should contribute even if you've got a small house and you only put like three kilowatts solar on your roof that can help during the day to feed your uh, fridge your standby electronics and if you could push this power back into the grid, it mm. could basically supply power to your workplace. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but tell me something, Mr. Schnabel. You know, a lot of people, obviously at the moment, because demand has increased so much, uh, obviously the market will then make it more expensive. Uh, it's, 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 you know, it's an old age uh, kind of uh, way to work around business. What would be your advice, especially to people who can't afford to get their own solar panels now? There are those companies, for instance, who uh, allow you to rent to buy? Yes, um, that is an option. If that's not your core business to you know, run your own solar system and you basically outsource it, you basically lease a system and then own after it's paid off, that is one typical option. But can I tell you that since 2014, mm. we reached grid parity meaning the electricity from the grid was as expensive as the electricity from solar 2014 okay we are now almost nine years later and since then you know that our electricity prices from the grid from escom and all the municipalities just went up and solar pv went down so even today um, um you know solar is so much cheaper and yes if there is a high demand then mm. prices might go up a little bit and they did in the first two quarters of this year but they're back down where they were before that so um solar pv is still the the cheapest way of generating electricity and there's no doubt that everybody that should do it and and that everybody that owns a roof should put 
at least one or two panels on it. I'm not saying you need to build a huge system which costs you 200 or 250,000 rand. You can start with even one or two modules and just start with a small, very small system just to contribute to um, what you're using. And then as you earn more money and have got more savings, you can buy the next one. Remember, it's built out of modules, so it's mm. modular. You can, you can grow it as you have, can afford it. And that's the beauty about the system. Um, and everybody that has got a roof, and we all know that um, sunshine is all over South Africa, um, should do it. I mean, it's, it's absolute a, a must. And with that, we also, every kilowatt hour that we can push into the grid or don't take from the grid, relieves the system to supply um, electricity to others. So it reduces uh, in, in such a way then um, load setting stages mm. by the kilowatt hours um, that are there. And that was also something that was said. Um, there are multiple, uh, you discussed it just now with the prof, there are multiple mm. things that had the effect of load shedding coming down. Yeah. And one of them, interesting was that um, the amount of solar PV during the day that helps the grid is ah. um, that quite enormous and that has done oh so it makes sense pollution. because when they Not when they when they upped the the load shedding stages it was after that cold front with the snow so that means there was no sunlight to assist with power into solar yes but be careful with with that comment uh, uh. <laughs> um, so and um, photovoltaic means light photo and voltaic into electricity like yeah. photosynthesis that plants do take the sunlight convert it into into sugar so photo means light so as long as it is light okay. there will be electrons being produced of course when there is cloud cover and rain it mm. will only be 20 or 30 percent of what you normally would get through the day okay. but it still produces some electricity so that's the yeah. beauty about solar you know people say what is if it's raining it still works it doesn't do that much mm -hmm. and that's why um, if you plan a bigger solar system for a uh, for your company or even a country then you always over um, panel or over um, build your solar capacity because it's the All cheapest right. and then during those rainy days you will have at least enough to cover the basics yeah. And that is basically how you overcome those days that are not so um, um, solar friendly where there is rain and cloud. All right. Thank you so much uh, for your time. I'll definitely take your advice. I'll just keep buying panels little by little and not expect to do a whole big thing at exactly. the same time. Thank you uh, for that advice. That was solar energy expert uh, Widow Schnabel.